everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about how to implement the good habits and how to break the bad ones. Because on YouTube, you will find so many videos telling you about all the habits you're supposed to have. To be that girl, to lean down for summer, all of that. But no one's telling you this is how to actually set up habits. So I'm gonna fix that today. We are not talking about which habits to implement. We are just going to be talking about how to implement them for good. Also, for those who don't know me, hi, my name is Flo, I'm a certified personal trainer and my mission on here is basically to help you reach your dream body the healthy, the sustainable way. So, let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the actual definition of habits, which is an action that you are repeating over a certain period of time. And it's often performed unconsciously. For example, if you do drive, you will know at some point you kind of go from A to B without actually having to have any conscious thought as to what you're doing. Basically on autopilot, pun intended. It's also learned behavior in the sense that this is something that you actually get to set in place off of a cue, so a trigger, if you will. It can be a time, it can be a person, it can be an object, it can be any type of event. It is then followed by a reward. For example, the cue in the morning, you brush your teeth, and then the reward is you've got a nice smelling and you know, nice tasting mouth. And overall habits play a very significant role in just shaping our lives. We are the products of our habits. So if you have more positive habits like exercising and eating healthy, you may have a more positive life that if you don't exercise and you don't eat healthy, you eat a lot of junk food, you may have more health issues and so on. So, you know, I'm a personal trainer first, so that's obviously what I'm going for first, but you get the idea. As I was briefly explaining right before when we talked about the definition, I was talking about the habit starting with a cue. Let me introduce you to the habit loop. The habit starts with a cue, then you've got the craving, then you've got the routine, which is the actual action, and lastly the reward, and it just gets that positive feedback loop. The more you do it, the more ingrained it's gonna get. And that kind of leads us to the fact that you cannot, as I was hinting at at the beginning, you cannot break habits, you can only change them. And this is mostly why people find it so hard to quit smoking, for example. It's just because if you don't replace it with something at first, you are going to feel the lack. You will have the cue, which can be a time, which can be a situation, which can be like anything else. You will crave the reward coming from the cigarette, right? So the nicotine and you know, the feel good and feeling less stress and whatever that may mean for you. But if you just get rid of the routine, you have the cue, you gotta have the craving, but you're just gonna feel the lack, which is why you have to replace it. Some people like to, you know, chew gum or, or have like sweets or whatever works for them. So the first thing you wanna do if you wanna change any type of habits or reinforce others or add new is to make a list of everything you're doing over the course of a day. You can do it over multiple days. One day you actually figure out what do I do in the morning, then what do I do in the afternoon and then evening, figure out however you wanna do that. But you have to figure figure out what you're doing on a daily basis. And then off of that list, just write a plus or a minus or a to go or a to stay so you know which one you actually want to get rid of and which one are positive and you want to keep them or reinforce them. For all the habits that you want to get rid of, you have to first start with figuring out what is the cue. For example, maybe you wake up, so that's the cue is just like you getting up and then immediately you get your phone. So that's the craving of, oh, I need to check my phone. And then you've got the reward of actually dopamine and everything, right? You really need to know what is the start of the action, the actual habit. Now, if you want to add habits to your life, what you have to do is figure out where do I want to add it? For example, let's say that in the morning you spend, I'm going to exaggerate it, one hour, maybe not, one hour in your bed scrolling on socials and you would like to actually get some movement in, maybe do some stretches in the morning. So what you'll have to do is figure out what's the cue and then, oh, it's just me waking up and I see my phone. And then you wanna ask yourself, what could be the cue for me to change the habit? So maybe it could be just literally setting up your yoga mat and maybe some sort of workout gears as well or workout clothes, setting up like immediately where you see them next to your bed, on the chair, in your room, wherever you actually get to see them. The cue can be something visual. Now that we have the cue in, what we wanna figure out is what type of reward do I wanna get? Nothing is going to change 
if you don't have the queue and the reward completely like set up and in place. So you want to figure out what's going to be the reward. At first, I feel like it might not be that, but sometimes it's going to be, you know, the fact of having done it in itself. You may feel a little bit better in your body if you do the stretches. You want to figure out what is going to be the reward for that specific habit. I'm going to give you a little trick on how to help yourself when it comes to having that reward in place. And that's one that I actually do share with my clients, especially one that really struggle with working out or you know with eating healthy and so on it's a reward system it can be digital it can be physical however you need it to be the point here is you are going to figure out which habits are the hardest for me to actually implement pick one to three habits that would be the hardest for you to implement maybe it's working out maybe it's you know stop snacking in the afternoon like whatever it may be once you have that, every single time you get yourself to do the habits that you want to do or to prevent yourself from doing the habits that you don't want to do, you add from one to five dollars into a jar. So for me, it was in my notes app. It can be a physical jar, however you want it. And it's going to add up and you will have also on the side a wish list of whatever you actually want to buy for yourself. And the great thing is the more you get to do the things that you said you were to do and so add the money or not do the things that you said you wouldn't do so add the money you'll actually get to buy yourself the things that you want to buy the things that are on your wish list so it's going to be a combination of you know the inside and outside improvement because you are going to change internally in the sense of what you are going to be doing on a daily basis but also externally because you are going to start to buy and therefore surround yourself with new objects that correspond to the new person you're becoming because as i said we are the products of our actions and our habits so if you change your habits you're becoming a new person quick mentioned to finding your whys because sometimes we want to add habits for the sake of adding these habits because some influencer said it would be great but if you don't know why you're doing it and if you don't have a strong purpose behind it it can feel pretty redundant pretty quickly so you also really want to figure out as you add your list of the habits you'd like to add why is it important for you to add because sometimes it isn't and at the end of the day it's okay if you don't do pilates every saturday morning like every fit influencer does I don't, I'm not into Pilates at all. You get the point. I know that you're gonna ask me, okay, how long does it take to set up a habit? My answer to that is going to be, it depends. And before you get mad, think about brushing your teeth. You are supposed to do that two to three times per day. So this is the habits, when we think of habits and how easy it is to implement them, most likely you're going to mention brushing your teeth just because it's so easy to do that. We all do that mindlessly. We don't have to think about it. It's not a chore. It's something that we just do. And that's something, as I said, that you do a few times per day. So what is really going to matter here is the frequency. I have some clients who prefer to be working out every day for like 25 minutes just because they get the habit of working out every day. They don't want to be doing it for one hour or more, you know, three times per week. They'd rather do short burst of exercise every day just because it's easier for them to have that frequency of doing it every single day at a specific time. It works for them, so you know, it works for me as well. But the point is the frequency. It's going to be easier to set up a daily journaling habit than a every other day journaling habit. It's going to take less time for it to get inside your brain and get ingrained in your brain just because you're doing it every day. Let's talk about not overwhelming yourself when it comes to implementing habits because once that you have that trick you know you have the okay i have to figure out the cue i have to make it visual i have to make it effective and so on okay i can literally transform my life and change all of my habits today not so fast i don't want you to change every habit in the blink of an eye overnight go from zero to hundred no this is the best recipe to get overwhelmed because it is a change and we as a human really like homeostasis so when everything stays the same so we don't really like it when it gets different point being you don't want to change more than one to three habits every three weeks sometimes it takes a little bit longer but i don't think it's very good to try to do too many all at once and while we're on the subject of zero to 100 it's also not amazing to try and do 25 minutes of meditation every day when you're used to doing none I would suggest you start with one to three minutes. Once it get easy, try to increase the time. And it works for every single habit. Don't go from zero to 100. Be patient. At least you're doing something. It's better than doing it for 25 minutes for a couple of days and then quitting because it gets too hard. Changing your habits doesn't have to be complicated. It's just a question of changing the cue. 
and then changing the reward. These are the only two you actually have an influence on. I know some people who at first slept in their workout clothes because that way they literally couldn't escape exercising. They woke up basically ready to go to the gym, so that works as well. But the point really here is to focus on the cue. Make it visual, make it easy, make it accessible. Really something that you cannot miss. Seeing it and knowing that you're supposed to do it is going to help actually get you started on there. And that's also where you want to explore and experiment because sometimes you'll think, oh, I think I could actually read first thing in the morning and you will not feel, you know, awake enough in the morning to actually do that and you will actually prefer doing it you know in the evening before going to bed because it's going to help you fall asleep like i've experimented with both and it turns out i can read very scientific and complicated non-fiction in the morning in the evening it has to be a very simple type of non-fiction that's basically what i can do and i'm fine with it the goal here is to experiment and find what works best for you because even if you do want to do the habit in itself it also has to really fit with your lifestyle and fit in with your life and fit it with your values and who you are. It's a fun test and it's a fun way to experiment with, you know, your lifestyle and who you want to become. That was pretty much the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions because I see you on the Instagram DM, but sometimes it's actually way easier to comment on the YouTube video because it may be answering questions that other people have. And before I forget, if you're someone who wants to lose 20 plus pounds within 90 days without starving yourself, spending hours on the treadmill or cooking without saying goodbye to your favorite food and of course without gaining the weight back right after the process is over, I have a few spots available still for one-on-one -on -one coaching so apply down below. We'll see if you're a good fit for the program, if I can truly help you and if I can you can expect transformation like this and you know moms of three doing it so why not you so yeah that was pretty much the end of this video again thank you so much for watching if you like it make sure to you know like subscribe comment share all that good stuff and i'll see you in the next video bye